There were nine trades in the NFL on Tuesday ahead of the deadline, and yet the Bengals weren't involved in any of them. I have plenty of thoughts on that. Deals that would have made sense to me and more right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk. Hi again, everyone, and welcome in to CBT. I'm James Rapine of AllBengals.com. Hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and look, the mood, kind of somber right now in Bengal land. The Bengals 4-4, four and four, getting really crushed, dismantled, dominated, whatever word, adjective you want to use, that's what happened in Cleveland on Monday night. And so with Chido Bayouzier's injury, which has been confirmed, league sources telling Cincinnati Bengals talk that, yes, it was in fact, a torn right ACL. Ian Rappaport was the first to, to report it. I have been able to confirm that, though, which makes sense considering he was on crutches and a bulky knee brace uh, leaving the stadium. And when I mean bulky, I mean it's one of those big, thick knee braces where you know it, it looks serious. And um, it's really unfortunate. It, really unfortunate. And this defense is going to be much worse off. And, and so going into Tuesday... I thought a couple of things. Yes, the Bengals are banged up, right? They've lost in a, man, a matter of a week. Jamar Chase, Chido uh, you know, other guys are, are dinged up, whether it's Trey Hendrickson, DJ Reader still on injured reserve. And I thought, you know what? This might be the time where they actually do get a deadline deal done, where they look at the market and they find a cornerback that can help, or they find a receiver that, that can alleviate some of the pressure, uh, you, you know, that really is on this offense without Jamar Chase. It's pressure, and it makes it tougher to operate. And so I thought, maybe, maybe they'll go out and do something. Maybe they'll find an edge rusher just in case, Trey Hendricks and insurance. And instead, the Bengals stand pat, which is a lot of what you told me and a lot of what fans told me was going to happen. At the same time, I, I really did. I thought that there was a shot here because we've seen the Bengals do some uncharacteristic things over the past couple of years. And, and whether it's uh, claim a bunch of guys over the past couple of seasons, whether it's be active in free agency, whether it's spend money in free agency, it's not just active, it's spend big money in free agency. I thought, you know, there's a shot. And, and the guy I wanted, the blockbuster, the game changer that I thought could be had is, and, and I, I really didn't entertain it much until Bradley Chubb got traded to the Dolphins at about, oh, 2 Eastern time. And so when that happened, and there was a report out that, oh, well, Denver's trying to recoup some of those draft picks that they gave away to get Russell Wilson, it's like, okay, well, what, what's Jerry Judy going to cost? And I know Benjamin Albright, who, who covers the Broncos in a variety of mediums and, and has been right a lot when it comes to the team and, and being an insider, he said, look, they want a two and a five for Jerry Judy. I would have done it. There's going to be people that say, heck no, James, that's way too much. I'm just telling you, I would have done it. I, I would have traded for Jerry Judy, boom, right now if it was a two and a five. Because he's got a year plus left on his deal. He's on a rookie contract, slides right in, um, and would make a ton of sense for this Bengals team. And can play the slot, can play outside, can do a bunch of different things. Now, that's the big splash, the crazy splash. Were there baseline cornerbacks or wide receivers that could be deep threats or insert whoever that they could have been interested into yeah and, and and that's the part of it where i was like maybe they're gonna make a deal jerry judy's probably the the biggest name on that list brandon cooks what was being floated around I, I didn't really think that was as likely but look this team they have to work through some things now this defense is not going to be this all-world defense that you thought it, it, you know it was early in the season that streak of second half touchdowns yeah that Disappeared once, twice, three times on Monday night, right? So it's going to have to change. And the way it changes is this offense plays better. What's well, much easier said than done when you don't have Jamar Chase. And so that would have been my logic to add another weapon. Uh, and didn't happen. You know, TJ Hawkinson, that was a blockbuster deal. I mean, it was a really active NFL trade deadline. And that's why I was like, man, it just feels like they might get something done. And, and nothing got done. And so this Bengals team now, 4-4, four and four, no Chido Bayouzie. Uh, I don't think you'll have DJ Reader back this week, maybe, but suddenly you're facing a must-win scenario again, must-win against Carolina. And, you know, if, if they don't, and even if they do, 5-4, and four, they're right in the middle of the pack. And, and, you know, if you could have swung a trade, that would have helped. Um, put it like this, I don't think Dolphins fans are bummed that the Dolphins pulled off another trade. And I'm not saying give up a one for Bradley Chubb either. I'm not saying that. But sometimes deals can be had. And, you know, maybe the, the, there was the, the rumor in report from Albert Breer 
that, oh, well, Brandon Wilson, Isaiah Prince, those are two potential trade candidates. I didn't really understand Prince, and I didn't think the Bengals would trade him. But uh, a guy like Brandon Wilson, the safety, they're deep in that safety room. And, and, and you know, that didn't happen either. So it is uh, it is what it is, as they say, is the Bengals, they don't make any moves at the deadline. By the way, make sure you get to my bookie uh, because, well, let's be honest here, the Bengals, they're favored against the Panthers at home, Sunday, Pecor Stadium. It's going to be a quick turnaround, quick turnaround, quick turnaround. And so that's the beauty of a short week. Uh, you know, you can get that taste out of your mouth. And maybe you had a bad betting weekend, or maybe you haven't even checked out my bookie yet. Well, you need to get to my bookie and use promo code Bengals Talk because you're going to get that double deposit match that they do. Oh, yeah, double deposit bonus. And it's exactly how it sounds. You deposit 500 bucks with promo code Bengals Talk, they're going to give you 500 bucks. You deposit 1,000, they're going to give you 1,000, all the way up to a grand. So, don't delay. Get to my bookie. And it's not just NFL. It can be NBA and anything in between. The World Series, you want to wager on that, you can do that too. But certainly, with the Bengals trying to go into the buy on a high note, make sure you get to my bookie and use promo code Bengals Talk. We'll be back at the Bengals facilities on Wednesday. It's certainly going to be interesting to see the vibe, get the latest uh, injury news. You know, Zach Taylor and company, they did not talk on Tuesday. They will talk. On Wednesday, we'll hear from Joe Burrow again. I'll get to review the tape. Um, just one quick thought. Just too many checkdowns. This offense did not push the ball downfield at all. Uh, and that can't happen. They need to find ways to produce big plays. And they could not do that and did not do that against the Cleveland Browns. For Andrew Fox Miller, our channel coordinator, I'm James Rapine signing off for now. By the way, make sure you tune in. Bengals on the Brain with Joe Goodberry live Tuesday night, 8 Eastern. And if it's after Tuesday at 8 Eastern, guess what? Check it out anyway because it's right here on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button, ring the bell. And until next time, I'm James Erpine signing off for now on CBT, Cincinnati Bengals Talk.